Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 432 of Ink in Your Veins. I'm Rachel Heron, here today with Ines Johnson, who is incredible, for another bonus special episode about getting unstuck. Before we jump into this joyous, incredible, inspiring interview, I realize I haven't really done a what's going on around here kind of update because I've been putting out so many of these little podcasts. What is going on around here? 300 backers over a Kickstarter. I've forgotten the amount. Isn't that amazing? I think it's like $15,514, which is incredible. That's going on. Oh, it makes my head dizzy when I think about it. I haven't, I think I've mentioned this, but I haven't even looked in really to see who the backers are or what they're backing at because it's such a happy source of stress that I just lie down on the floor and gasp like a fish when I think about that. So, and that's the way I do happy things. That's just the way I, that's the way I roll. I really love thinking about this, um, but not so much looking into the details, into the fine print, uh, because it makes me too happy and I get a headache. That is the God's truth. Um, speaking of headaches, I have fought a few and a couple of them may have been coming from a particular place. I, I, you know me, I have one of those bodies and it's weird and it does strange things. And, um, nobody pays attention, least of all myself. When I say things like ah, I'm feeling dizzy, Oh gosh, I'm feeling, got it. got a headache coming on. Oh, wow. I feel a little nauseated. It's just the way my body does things. I don't think about it. It doesn't bother me too much. I complain like an old steam train, and but I do it quietly and I don't bother anybody, not even myself most of the time. But then Lala said, oh, that's weird. I, 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 I felt dizzy yesterday. And then she felt dizzy again. And I thought, we thought, let's, let's get this checked out. We have, uh, I don't know, one of the 10 gas furnaces for central heating in New Zealand. There's probably more than 10, but not many. 95% of homes in New Zealand do not have central heating, even though it freezes here and insulation is not good. Houses are cold. Houses are very cold here and we're in autumn. Um, but we had never got the furnace checked since we'd moved into the house. And I'd noticed a few days before I started to feel funny that we had just started using it in the morning as autumn is setting in here. And I like the house to be above 55 degrees um, Fahrenheit. And I'd noticed it was running rough. I could hear it under the house and usually can't hear it under the house. So we thought, oh, maybe need something checked. Might as well call somebody in. No, it had cracked. It had cracked along the top and was just leaking gas. The young man who came out to service it was visibly shaken. I saw him in the uh, driveway pacing, talking to his boss. And then he came in and said, I've got to cap it. I've got to turn off the gas. And we're like, yeah, of course you do. Thank you. I think he thought we were going to get mad at him. No, please save our lives. We appreciate it. Junebug had been acting really weird, barking all the time. She barks sometimes, but not very much. And in fact, in these days, in this about week where all these weird things were happening, Lala had come to check on me in my office because she said Junebug had been doing a Timmy, Timmy's in the well kind of lassie thing. She'd come to check on me in case Junebug was saying there's something wrong with Rachel because that's what it felt like to her. Isn't that scary? Yes, we have a CEO monitor. No, we didn't have it up on the wall, but I did put it up before the fella came out because we had to wait a few days for him to come out. And it, it never beeped or anything like that. So it was probably just like a low level leak, which could just make you feel nauseated and headachey and dizzy. And um, apparently you can make the dog be upset. So we have no heat, but it's been okay. I'm bundled, I'm bundled up and we're going to be replacing the furnace soon with a nice um, heat pump ducted system. Ducted system, man. They do not exist. I've never met one person in New Zealand who has a ducted central heating system. People just use 35% of New Zealanders only use a wood stove. Um, and the rest use like, you know, standing heaters uh, or the heat pumps that go in the wall and blow out either hot or cold air. They're very, very low energy. So we're excited to get that. But I'm also excited to um, not have all died. That was that was really a perk of this last week. 
And um, yeah, so what else has been going on? I think that's probably about it. My sister returns from her travels. She's been gone for a month traveling the South Island and she returns today and I can't wait to see her. And there are six days left in the Kickstarter and I'm just so overjoyed about these podcast interviews. They are a perk for myself and hopefully for you that I never saw coming. I did not plan to do episodes on getting unstuck. It was not in my plans until the day before I started doing them. Literally the Kickstarter had already launched, had it launched. Maybe it was a day or two away from launch when I, when I invited a whole whack of people to come on the show if they wanted to. And it has given so much joy and inspiration to me. And I hope it has done that for you too. So please let's jump into this incredible interview with Ines. If you have never heard her, you are in for a treat. If you have heard her, you know what's coming and this is just the best. So I'm so glad you all are here. Thank you for being here. And here we go. I could not be more pleased to have on the show today, you. Will you please share your name and pronouns with us? Hi, everybody. I'm Ines. I write kissing books and my pronouns are she and her. <laughs> Ines, it's so good to see you. Here's a little bio. Level lover of fairy tales, folklore, and mythology, Ines Johnson spends her days reimagining the stories of old in a modern world. She also writes sweet Western romances under the pen name Shanae Johnson. Aside from being a writer, professional reader, and teacher, Ines is a very bad Buddhist. She sits in Sangha every week, and while others are meditating and getting their Zen on, she's contemplating how to use the teachings to strengthen her plots and character motivations. Ines lives outside Washington, D.C. with her two sidekicks who are growing up way too fast. I absolutely identify with this so much. My meditation this morning was 100% about sourdough, 100%. Just thinking about like the, the percentages I wanted to try. I'm, I'm, I'm always the last. If I get on a trend, it's dead. Sourdough is dead because I'm on it now. Welcome, Ines. We have not talked in forever. I cannot Ever. remember when you were on the show. I meant to see when you were on the show, and I can't remember, but it, um, people will fall in love with you and should go back and find <laughs> that if you have not already heard Ines somewhere else. But um, I'm so excited to talk to you about this particular topic about getting unstuck. And here's yeah. why. You are an incredible thinker. You, where, where is you? You know your Clifton strengths. Where's your intellection? It is number three. Okay. See, see. If you would ask me another one. <laughs> <laughs> Intellection is the one that makes us think a lot. And what you do is you think about your process and then you optimize. You're so good at doing that kind of thing. And it can be both easier and harder for people like that when we look down and see that we've gotten exactly where we wanted and we feel stuck about it. Can you tell us about a time that this happened to you and- what did you do? It's so funny that you bring up intellection because, and it's so, so funny that you bring up the first time that we talked because I'm, it's the same thing that we talked about then. When we talked, I was struggling because I knew I wanted to, I'm, I'm a teacher. I've, I've just gotten that. Yeah. I've accepted that. Yeah. I, me too. I, I'm a storyteller, but I, but in addition, I am a teacher and I, whenever I'm teaching, I'm telling you stories and trying to get you to understand a process by giving you a story because a process yeah. is a story. And when we talked, I was, I didn't realize that I was in burnout. The only time that I've ever been burnout is with teaching because I love teaching, but there came a time when the student body at the school that I worked at was not intellectually curious. They <sighs> just wanted the answer. And that's very difficult for me. So I didn't realize that that was, that's what was going on at the time, but I, I wanted out and I didn't know how to get out. And then the school closed down. <laughs> <laughs> the look of wicked delight that just went across your face. <laughs> I went I went by there a year ago and the, the building is gone. That's how closed down it was. It's gone. I blame you. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't that I wanted out of teaching. I wanted to talk to people who were curious again. So that's when I got stuck because I told myself, you don't want to be a teacher anymore. You don't want to deal with that stuff anymore. Nope. If anybody asks you, nope, don't say anything. And I didn't realize that that was really hurting me because mm -hmm. I crave, like you said, I crave looking at something 
picking it apart and I then, then figuring out how it works, optimizing it to work the best way possible. And then I want to tell somebody. <laughs> I wasn't telling anybody. Where is your input? It's got to be. A, oh, it's, I think it's high. I'm number one discipline, achiever, intellect, and focus learner. And I can only remember my top oh, yeah. five. They're written on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. Sorry, sorry. So um, optimize yeah. and tell someone. So I needed to optimize and tell someone, and I wasn't, like I said, I was not talking to people, but if you came at me at a, uh, like a, a, a conference and you caught me at the bar and you asked me something, I would unload on you. <laughs> and so people, it was funny because people started to ask me to do more and more conferences and talk. And, and I, and I started getting excited. I was like, oh, I don't teach anymore. I'm retired, but I'll tell you and sure. Tell your friends. I'll tell them too. And so <laughs> the way that I got, so this is how I got unstuck. And I really, it was really an unraveling, Rachel. Ooh, really ooh, unstuck. I love that. Because if I felt like I was peeling layers back, like, and I really, and I also realized I only want to talk to romance authors. I don't really want to talk to anybody else. Yes. So I want yes. to talk to people because we're curious. We don't, we, we're also artists. So I can tell you a process and then you can take that process and you can apply it to yourself, which I think is beautiful because it takes something that I figured out maybe, or I, let's say I figured it out. And then, <laughs> yes, yes. And, <laughs> and then you take it, it's almost like a game of phone. And then you take it and you expand it and you tell somebody else and they expand it. And then we're all, and then it gets back to me. And I'm like, oh, I didn't think of it that way. And then we go again, which makes me stronger. It makes you stronger and makes this industry that I love just stronger by us talking about it and building. And I feel like we are always, always learning. I just love that example of this, that round, round, round game mm -hmm. of telephone. I was, mm -hmm. I was once teaching at Seton Hill and I, I laid just a truth bomb down and I, and I said, I can't remember where I got this, but Dr. Nicole Peeler, who's in the audience, who brought me to Seton Hill to speak, she raised her hand. She says, that's mine. And it had made it so, you know, all the way back in front of her own students. I, <laughs> but that's, but we are, but we're always learning and relearning and relearning. And at the second that I forget what kind of mindset I need or what kind of tool I need, I need somebody else to remind me. And you are so good at doing that. You're so good at sharing knowledge. And I love because you you do this and you do the work. You are yeah. a hard working writer. I I just get so frustrated with it with the teachers who are teaching but not doing. Uh, yeah, tell me, tell me, because you've got that, your that face was came a alive. Fear of mine, it did. It came alive because that was a fear of mine. Because there's that old adage: those who can do, those yes. who can teach, right? Terrifying. And so I felt like, well, maybe I should not be teaching because if I start teaching, people are going to think, well, there must be something wrong with my business. And it's not. My business is thriving. <laughs> Your business does but great. I, <laughs> I should be quiet. And like, no, you have something to say. I can, I can, I, in my mornings are spent writing and my afternoons are spent doing coursework mm -hmm. and explaining things to people. Like I just, someone asked me literally a week ago, someone asked me, I'm, they said they were writing at the hidden identity trope. And they were, they were like, I'm trying to figure out the the trope. The, what are the beats of the trope? Because I love to talk about the beats of the trope. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, it's it's when when someone has a hidden identity, they're living in their false identity, and the the, the love interest falls in love with their true essence. Oh. And they just stopped and looked at me, and I was like, that's not clear to anybody else. Uh -huh. but not only that, then the next day I sat down and I was like, I see this clearly. I'm gonna write it out for this person. By the time I looked up, I'd written twenty pages explaining why this trope was, what all the plot points they needed to have, why readers would resonate with it. I told them what I thought the universal fantasies were. I had this thing where, um, um, so you have your universal fantasy, right? Which is the why, why readers love the trope. But then I, I like to talk about the proof of it. And the, that proof is those heartbeat moments that you see as the micro tropes on TikTok. It's like when he is oh, leaning yeah. over her and he's looking at her and he sees who she truly is stuff like that I yeah. was like then you need to have those heartbeat moments of the proof and then I wrote those down. and I was like here you go for people who are at this moment dying to get their hands on that is that going to be out somewhere like where can they where can they learn this stuff from you let's let's move yeah. this into I realized that should be a class because it then should I be and then I, 
And then I did the same thing for The Marriage of Convenience, which is my favorite trope. I could talk to you about that for days. And I did the same thing. I sat down and I wrote down everything that I knew about it, including what a generic outline would look like, what the universal fantasies are, what the beats look like, why people would love it. I gave examples of movies. 20 pages. <laughs> I was like, I keep doing this. This is so much fun. So yeah. We would like I'm to give you money for this. <laughs> so I'm developing the Romance Rights Club. I'm hoping to launch it in May. And I want to do a trope a month because again, people talk about, oh, romance is so formulaic. And I'm like, Anne, is that, is, are you trying to, to diss us? This, of course it is. Our readers have told us exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. And all we need to do is give it to them. And because we are artists, we innovate naturally. So we're still following a pattern and sometimes we'll zig, but we come back to that pattern just to kind of give them like a kind of moment, but you go right back to the pattern. Someone was telling me today, they were like, with, with, with romance, the people who don't get it, the people who think, oh, romance is easy because it's so formulaic, I'll come oh in here. Oh my Lord. What they do often is romance readers want chocolate. And they're like, here's some beef jerky. <laughs> and they're surprised that it doesn't work. They're like, but this is, this will work better for you. This, you should want this. And I'm wondering, part of me is wondering, is, is it because romance readers are like 80% women? Yes. Like women are saying, this yes. is what I want. Can mm -hmm. you please give me what I want? And the people who are like, nah, I know better than you. Yeah, boo. Okay. And- okay. And it's always those people that think that their readers are not that smart and the writers are not that smart. And we have to keep saying out loud, very clearly, romance is, I've written now, I'm in six genres. Romance is by far the hardest, by far. Once you nail romance, well, who, who nails anything? But once you feel like you have a better concept of nailing a genre, if you can nail romance, you can do, and that's what I feel like. It was the best. I learned how to, I'm, I'm jumping all over my words, but I learned how to drive on an old Suzuki Jeep like thing in the islands. And it, you like, you had to kick it with your foot to go into reverse and up driving up and down these coral roads. And I know that my dad would always say, if you can drive here, you can drive anywhere. And I can't. And that's like romance. If you're trying to keep two incredible people apart who actually belong together for mm -hmm. organic, not dumb reasons that's so hard please give me any other genre i don't write i don't write romance anymore because it was so difficult <laughs> <laughs> like have some respect <laughs> anyway that tangent aside i would love to know where we can find you and where we can sign up to know about these things like when this next class drops so the perfect thing, I, I, I write a, a free weekly newsletter. So if you go to nestwrites.com forward slash romance map, I wrote a 15 page kind of manifesto on the five necessary scenes of every romance. And I just give it away because I just kept talking about it. And it's like, here, you can have it here. You can have it. Um, and so that's the, that if you get on that newsletter, because along with the, the map, um, you also get on a newsletter where I'm talking about things like um, I love goal setting. So I'm talking about things like goal setting on there. I come yes. from television, So I'm constantly talking about the things that I'm, I learned in TV that I'm using in television, like the difference between a prologue and a teaser and how a TV teaser might work better for you than doing a prologue and things like that. Um, so if you get on that newsletter, you'll see that. And that's where I announce all of my new classes. And that will very soon be one of them. I'm going to do trope a month. I'm really Yay. excited about it. Yay. I am. I, I don't know how I'm not on that list and I'm going to go join <laughs> immediately because i must be on this thank you for talking us through you getting unstuck i just loved seeing your whole being <laughs> radiate as you as you found your way out to teaching what you love to people who are passionate about yeah, learning it yes yes ines you do the you do the community such a huge amount of good. And I'm just going to encourage people just sometimes this is what I do. I'll put in Ines Johnson into my podcast catcher and I'll just go track you around. Like the show that you did with Sasha, the, the most recent show with Sasha yeah. was like mind blowing. And I was driving through the countryside and while you were talking, I'm like, I'm going to write two books a month. And I, you know, that's just, you have that effect on people. You, wow. okay, you make you. us believe we can do anything. So yay! thank you, Ines. You're the best. You're the best. <laughs>